We've seen it everywhere. For most people, G-Force is something only astronauts encounter on their way to space. But in reality, this invisible force has been a pilot's worst nightmare since the dawn of aviation. It's caused blackouts, severe medical complications, and even death, turning high-speed dogfights into deadly gambles. In the 1930s, Nazi Germany believed they had the ultimate solution to conquering gravity. All it took was making pilots lie down while flying. Sounds ridiculous, right? How does lying down help you fly a plane? And how did this bizarre forgotten aircraft manage to push aviation to new limits? Stay tuned as we uncover the untold story of how Germany tried to defy gravity and won. Before we dive into the insanity that is the Akka Flieg Berlin B9, we need to crash into the topic of G-Force. To put it simply, G-Force is something that fighter pilots face every single day. It's an invisible monster that literally squishes you into your seat, makes your face sag like melted cheese, and if you're not careful, knocks you out cold in midair. So, what exactly is G-Force? G-Force is the pressure exerted on a body due to acceleration, measured in multiples of Earth's gravity. By this definition, we all experience a degree of this force, known as 1G. At this level, the pressure only adds to our weight, but imagine if you suddenly weighed 9 times more than usual. Sounds uncomfortable, right? That's 9G, and that's what fighter pilots face during high-speed turns. In just seconds, your 150-pound body suddenly weighs 1,350 pounds. Blood rushes from your brain, your vision fades, and before you know it, lights out. That is called G-Lock, G-Force Induced Loss of Consciousness, or GLOC. And yes, this nightmare can happen mid-flight. Now, here's the crazy thing. Everything that moves experiences G-Force, but the forces that these pilots endure are much more dangerous. Unlike astronauts or race car drivers who experience horizontal G-Force, fighter pilots face a far greater challenge due to the cockpit's design. Most fighter jet cockpits have an upright or slightly reclined seat, meaning pilots experience vertical G-Force. This is extremely dangerous because blood is pulled from head to toe, making it harder for the heart to pump blood to the brain and increasing the likelihood of G-Lock. Today, some modern jets like the F-16 feature more reclined seats to reduce the impact of G-Forces. However, pilots still rely on G-Suits and the anti-G straining maneuver, a technique where the muscles in the legs, abdomen, and chest are tensed while regulating the breath to avoid blood pooling in the lower body. These measures help, but the risk of G-lock remains. But what if there was a way to bypass vertical G-force? A way to increase a pilot's chance against G-lock. And maybe even a way to eliminate the mid-flight nap altogether. That's exactly what Germany aimed to achieve in the 1930s, and what they developed had the potential to revolutionize aviation. Named the Akka Flieg Berlin B-9, this experimental aircraft was built during World War II by Akka Flieg Berlin, a prestigious student-run aeronautical engineering group based in Berlin. Along with the Flugtechnische Fakke Group, you'll have to excuse the pronunciation, it was designed to study the use of a prone pilot position to withstand high G-forces, especially during high-speed dive bombing. Although the idea sounds odd, this plane was based on the earlier success of the prone FS-17 glider, designed by the FFG Stuttgart starting in 1938. This glider shocked the world by proving that pilots in a prone position could survive up to 14 Gs, which, by the way, was quite a feat. On average, a regular person can tolerate about 4 to 5 Gs before experiencing tunnel vision or losing consciousness. An experienced fighter pilot with training, a G-suit, and the anti-G straining maneuver may endure up to 9 Gs for brief periods until reaching their physical limit. Essentially, the study demonstrated that simply reorienting the pilot allowed for increased tolerance of extreme G-forces without relying solely on additional equipment or structures. Following the successful tests of the F-17, the Reichsluftfahrtministerium, or RLM, the central governing body for aviation in Nazi Germany, contracted Akka Berlin to design a power-assisted version. 
This project, designated 8341 by the RLM and internally known as the B-9, was intended to be a practical aircraft capable of withstanding up to 25 Gs during extreme high-speed maneuvers. The B-9 was designed by Theodore Godicki, Leo Schmidt, and Martin G. Winter, with the goal of increasing pilot endurance in combat, especially during the intense stresses of diving and bombing enemy targets. For such an ambitious project, design was everything, and what these men created was nothing short of an engineering miracle. Staying true to the sheer insanity of the project, the Akaflieg Berlin B-9, although not a traditional dive bomber, incorporated several innovative design features, ideal for high G-force maneuvers, especially dive bombing. One key feature was the prone pilot position, which placed the pilot laying flat on his stomach. Yes, it sounds odd, but this design distributed G-forces evenly across the body, reducing the risk of blackout during steep dives, an essential factor for accuracy in dive bombing. The cockpit, measuring about 1.5 meters in length, was spacious and made entirely of glass, offering an excellent view forward, above and beneath the aircraft. This clear view was critical as it allowed the pilot to accurately target and maneuver during a dive. The aircraft was built as a twin-engine, low-wing monoplane powered by two Hearth HM500 engines, each producing 105 PS, or 103 horsepower. Due to the prone position, instrument placement posed a unique challenge since traditional instruments would be difficult to read. To solve this, instruments were mounted behind the pilot and mirrored on the cockpit's back wall enabling the pilot to easily check essential data even under high g-forces. A small mirror was also provided, ensuring that the pilot could monitor critical information without sacrificing visibility during a dive. To further optimize control and safety, the B-9's control systems were meticulously optimized for prone operation. Ailerons and elevation controls were located on the right side. Throttles and flaps were on the left. Rudders and brakes were operated by the feet. Additionally, line markers on the windshield helped the pilot maintain orientation during high-speed dives, reducing the risk of spatial disorientation. Moving beyond the cockpit, the B-9's sturdy airframe was engineered to withstand forces of up to 25 Gs. It featured a steel tube fuselage and wooden wings reinforced with duraluminum sheets. Although these materials may seem rudimentary by today's standards, the design prioritized both efficiency and safety. It even included a chin support to secure the pilot's head and a harness system to keep him firmly in place. Overall, the design was highly detailed and expected to perform wonders. And this plane not only met those expectations, it destroyed them. Thanks to its innovative designs, the Akaflieg Berlin B-9 became an experimental aircraft that, despite never seeing operational use, was notable for its amazing performance and, at one point, was a serious candidate for Germany's anti-G dive bombing dreams. The B-9 achieved a maximum level speed of between 225 to 250 kilometers per hour, that's 140 to 155 miles per hour, and a dive speed of up to 450 kilometers per hour or 280 miles per hour, making it ideal for steep dives, critical for quick attacks and precision in dive bombing. With a range of about 400 kilometers or 250 miles, the B-9 was well-suited for short-range missions, but was not designed for long-range operations. It had a service ceiling of 4,000 meters or 13,000 feet, which it could reach in just over four minutes. Although the B-9's payload capacity is unclear, owing to its experimental nature and unconfirmed bomb load, it was equipped with provisions for a bomb rack. Its bombing role was largely theoretical, but its robust construction and high-G design suggested it could have performed admirably under dive-bombing conditions. In fact, even its maneuverability was enhanced by the aircraft's prone pilot position. This feature, combined with a sturdy airframe and responsive control surfaces, made the B-9 perfect for steep dives and precise maneuvering, vital for anti-G dive-bombing. First flown on April 10, 1943, the B-9 was designed with objectives such as high-speed diving, excellent field of view, and improved safety under extreme G-force conditions in mind. In approximately 33 tests, there was only one malfunction, and most test pilots praised the aircraft for its style and efficiency, 
However, testing revealed some limitations. The aircraft could only achieve a maximum of 8.5 G due to the fixed Schaefer propellers instead of the intended variable pitch MEP2 propellers, which also limited the dive speed to 450 km per hour. Although it never saw combat, the Akaflieg Berlin B-9 introduced several technical advancements that influenced later aircraft, especially military designs. The most notable innovation was the prone pilot position, which later impacted dive bombers like the Hanschel HS-132. Designed to improve G-tolerance during high-speed, high-stress bombing runs, the B-9 also featured mirrored instruments and a chin support, enhancements that improved cockpit ergonomics and safety. These innovations later contributed to design experiments in aircraft such as the Gloster Meteor after World War II. Furthermore, the B-9's airframe was built to endure up to 25G, a feature that paved the way for safer, high-performance aircraft designs. While the prone position did not become the military aviation standard, its research significantly enhanced pilot endurance and cockpit ergonomics, influencing both Axis and Allied designs efforts in the post-war period. Ultimately, the B-9 broadened the range of G-force tolerances and advanced cockpit safety during high-performance maneuvers, contributing to the future of dive bomber design and military aviation. But what happened to the plane itself? Sadly, the Akaflieg Berlin B-9 met an unfortunate end. After World War II, American forces discovered the abandoned single prototype at an airfield near Berlin. Despite its innovative features, there is no evidence that it was preserved or researched further after its discovery. Research indicates that it was very likely scrapped, a fate common to many experimental prototypes produced during the war that never flew. Amidst the post-war chaos, when much of German military hardware was dismantled and the Allied powers occupied the country, prototype aircraft like the B-9 had little strategic impact compared to mass-produced or jet aircraft. Its experimental nature, lack of combat service, and limited documentation likely sealed its fate. As confirmed by Plane Encyclopedia, the B-9 was abandoned and likely destroyed, having served no further purpose. While the B-9 incorporated creative concepts that spurred later aviation research, the aircraft itself disappeared into obscurity, its legacy preserved only in engineering notes and the designs it inspired. So, what do you think? Was the Akaflieg Berlin B-9 a groundbreaking innovation in aviation, or just another ambitious experiment doomed from the start? Could the prone pilot position have revolutionized high-speed combat, or was it always destined to be a footnote in aviation history? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you love deep dives into forgotten aircraft, experimental designs, and the wild engineering ideas of wartime aviation, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. We've got plenty more incredible stories from the world of aviation coming your way. Stay curious, keep exploring, and as always, we'll see you in the skies.